So, um, just had a great, uh, a great conversation with my, uh, my brother, former business partner and best friend, really. Um, and, um, a couple things crossed my mind during our conversation. And one thing that kind of crossed my mind a little bit was how men are, you know, in a sense, chastised somewhat rightfully so in my book at least for subscribing to like say only fans and often the argument is why subscribe to only fans you can get it for free and then some people would be like well you know i can get any woman for free on there but i can't get quote unquote this woman for free in a sense the content of you know a, a woman having sex with another person or whatever you know, like it's like it's special because it's her, you know, from a man's standpoint. But then I've been thinking about something that's um, a conversation that I even had uh, this past weekend that I made a video about. Um, it's about like, you know, applying, you know, make tough principles to a conversation. And it struck me like a lot of these conversations that I have, I think about them for days not like sulk over them or anything like that, but really just think about them and dive deep and dissect them and then try to make sense of it all in a sense uh, or, or to a certain extent. And one thing that that really kind of hit me today was that a lot of women do the quote unquote same thing or that a lot of women have the quote unquote only fans experience and do the same thing, things that men do when it comes to only fans this person's special i can't get this content or access to this person anywhere else there's nobody like this person i can't find anybody like this in the in my area um where the real men at oh my god i got one i can't let him go if you put this into perspective of a man getting an only fans Oh, she she's beautiful. Uh, I, there's nobody else with that type of personality. I, I can't find this anywhere else. I just noticed that my freaking flower hanger is down. I'm kind of pissed. I gotta fix that. Um, I can't get this anywhere else. Uh, there's no one else that can actually provide this for me. When we look at, when we know good and well that anybody can provide this for you. You just have to accept the person that's providing it for you. And it's the same thing with like men going into OnlyFans and then women going with dudes that will give them baby mama drama, you know, or they these women have to deal with um, uh, uh, the babe, the uh, the previous baby mama or the previous girlfriend, ex, whatever. And they have to deal with her and the BS that she put that she's bringing to the relationship the discord that she's actually causing within the relationship um, that you know this woman's going after. And it's kind of crazy because it's like we know that there are other options out there. And, you know, being especially like a, a MGTOW individual and like looking at it, we I know that there's other women out there. And especially and that's become more and more apparent as I've lived life. And I'm like, you know, all right, cool. It ain't this one. I'll go off to the next one. Right. But we know that there's other people out there, but for some reason, some reason, this one person means way more than they really should. And that's just kind of crazy. And we kind of see, uh, I, I like to call it the, and if anybody else has a better terminology for it that could be um, easily used or a general term or something like that, that can be used for both. I want to call it the only fans effect. You know, there's free porn out there, but hey. I only want to be a fan of this chick, you know, that type of stuff. So that would be kind of cool to hear. But um, we know that there are other other options out there. But those other options, for one reason or another, don't make any sense. They don't. Well, you know, <laughs> you're single. You're single and ready to mingle. But your clit. <laughs> I heard this one time. I'm single, ready to mingle, and for my clit to tingle. <laughs> So you're getting two out of three of those, but you're not getting that last one. And that's kind of the thing, you know, um, that's kind of the thing that we see even in uh, the the shelf. Uh, what's it called? The shelf scenario or the uh, 
uh, the shelf phenomenon where you put a person on a shelf or friend zone them and then they come and take you off the shelf. You haven't really changed much, but somehow, some way, you are now the person that should be, uh, what's it called? You are now the person that's taken off the shelf. You are now that person that's like, wow, I see the greatness in you. Oh my God, you've been my best friend. My my one has been here this whole time. I can't believe it. I overlooked you for so many years, blah, blah, blah. And it's just like, stop the cap. This is bullshit. You only see me now because there's nobody else looking at you. Anyways, um, that's what I wanted to make a quick video about. Uh, definitely leave a comment uh, talking about, you know, not not really your experiences because we see these things all the time, but your thoughts on what I just said. And uh, if there's, you know, a better way we can say these things, an uh, uh, actual better term uh, that we can actually use for this. As always, uh, enjoy your environment. Enjoy your view. This is my office and I fucking love it. And I hope you have a place like this in your life as well. Thank you as always. Peace.